Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at how to create a logo um, and assign a metallic material to it. Okay. So we are going to create uh, a trace a uh, 2D shape and then give it thickness using extrude and then by using bevel and then we will assign some materials to make it look metallic. All right. Uh, so in the process, we are going to learn how to use the shape tools uh, to uh, trace or create uh, 3D elements. Okay, so first thing is to bring in a logo that we can trace. I'm using a Batman logo. We have to create a plane. Hit M key for materials, drag a standard material, right click, assign material to selection, double click the material, this is the diffuse color, we will change the color by adding an image, we'll use bitmap, search for a logo, Batman logo, copy the image where you want and then assign it to the material okay right click and say show material in viewport so the material will be visible in the viewport we'll be mostly working in the front view so we'll make it default shaded and here you can scale your plane to decide what how the logo looks better so you don't want it too stretched or too circular just try to eyeball it and make it look the right size okay now whenever you create anything in the front view it will be placed on this line and our plane is there as well so we'll select the plane and move it back so when we trace we get our uh, 2d shapes in the dark line Okay. I'll delete this object. The next step we are going to we don't need the grid, so G key on the keyboard to hide the grid. Uh, we also don't want to select this object by mistake while working on our 2D shapes. So I'll right click and go to object properties and I'll say freeze. And also here it says show frozen in gray. We don't want that, so we will deselect it and say OK. Now the plane cannot be selected. All right. So now I'll make this big and we are ready to now start tracing these this low. So I'll go to the shapes here, shape tab. And now we are going to uh, look at various options. The line and circle are the two major ones we are going to use. So if you click and drag a circle, okay, <coughs> we got the circle and now we can right click and then convert it to editable spline all right so once you do that you have access to sub objects okay the vertex the segment and the spline the spline is the complete element a segment is a line connecting two vertices and these are the vertices so you can see that a smooth circle needs only four points to create all right so when we are creating this we need as less points as possible or as less vertices as possible the other thing is once you move this here it is difficult to see okay so what you can do is go to modify panel and under rendering you can make it enable and render it so you can see it we can give it a nice red color so it is visible and then if you zoom into it you can see that it is not smooth okay so what we can do is we can go under interpolation it may be close you have to open it and make it adaptive okay and then that will smooth the curve all right 
now what we need to do is scale it in one axis so it is big enough and then the thickness looks like too much so here you can go the thickness is 100 centimeters I will make it say 10 centimeters or maybe 25 something not too big not too small and then we will scale it And then with the other axis, then you can move it in place. All right. Now the other thing we will do is there are two ways to create the inner line. Okay, one simple way is to simply shift and scale. Okay, and then I'll just copy it. Alright, so now we get two different lines, this one and this one. And make sure that when you're working, everything is in the same place. You don't want one circle here, the other one here. Everything has to be in the same plane, same line. Okay, so if you're working in the front view all the time, you will not have problems. All right, so that was one way to do it. I will delete it. The other way to do it is select the spline. So you click on spline and select it. So the entire spline gets selected. And then we go all the way down. And there is something called an outline. So a negative value will go out, outside. So it's negative 500 as you can see. And if you go positive, it will go inside. So 300. Okay, the only thing is you cannot type in an exact number or if you do it again, now you'll get a third line. Okay, so only make sure that you only do it once. And if you don't like the results, deselect it. So maybe I can say 250. And that works well for me. So now we have created a line inside. Okay, and it's both are one thing. Okay, I will undo that and I'll go back to our first option. Alright, copy. So now we got two lines, they are separate, and then we can also attach these two. So I'll select the first one, and then on top there will be an attach option, and we can attach. So this is there are different ways to do the same thing. Uh, now it is attached and it has become one. Okay. now we will create the lines inside so what we will do is you can see that it is symmetrical so we will simply mirror half of it and only model half so we get the same results on the other side I'll use a line and the line to create line there are two ways to create a line so you can click 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 to create a line and right click to close it and then it creates a sharp edges. The other way is to click, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, right click, and then you get a smooth line. Okay, you can always convert these into smooth and this into corners as well. And we will look at those. All right, so I will delete this. The other thing I wanted to show you is uh, if you click, 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 click and drag and go into the same one oh, again, it says, do you want to close it? And we will say yes, and then it will get closed. All right. Now, if you want to close this, I can select the vertex and I'll select these two vertices and I'll use the weld tool so to find weld here. Let us close this selection interpolation. We don't need this anymore speed up our work rendering this weld so I'll click on weld and the thing gets welded because there's a distance also so all the selected vertices so if I select multiple vertices all the selected vertices within this distance 
will be welded. So we just increase the distance, weld it, and then those get welded. Okay, so try this here as well. You only want to select the vertices you want to weld, otherwise, if you select these three and click on weld, all those three will get welded. Okay, or you just want these two to create a closed shape. And then the other thing is, if you want to convert this to corner, you can see that you have a Bezier handle, okay? And when you move this handle, this handle moves as well. So if you right click and then say corner, then it becomes a corner. So I'll make all of these corners. Okay, and now it becomes a triangle. If you right click and make it smooth, it becomes smooth, but you don't have control over the smoothness. If you say Bezier, then you get those Bezier handles. And sometimes what may happen is, if you lock the x-axis, now it will only move in x. See, I try to make the handle small, it will not become small. So you can click in the middle here, and now it will move in x and y, okay? So clicking on the arrows will either lock them to a particular axis or release it. The other option is Bezier Corner. So I'm right clicking on the vertex, okay? Right click on the vertex and then go to Bezier Corner. And now these two handles are separate. So you have a better control over the curve. So if you are working with a curve which is smooth, then it should be a Bezier. But if you are working on a curve which has a pointed edge, then you need to work on, work with Bezier corner. The other important thing to understand is if there are two Bezier corners, then this handle should control half of the curve on this side and this should control half on this side. So the handle should not be too long. One should not be too long than the other. Try to have similar size handles. Okay. That way your curve will look nice. Okay. So let us use that here. So now I'll start and then click. So I need one. So this is the halfway part. This is one edge. This is another edge. This is another. This is kind of a curve, but I'll still click here. This is a curve, so I'll click and drag. I'll simply click here, click and drag here, click click and drag on the other side, click, click and drag. Don't worry about the line not being perfect. We'll fix that, so click. Okay, go to modify panel, and then when you create a line, you have all those options to you. So now we will zoom in and then real quick, put things in the right place. This looks good, this looks good. And then now we need to convert this into Bezier corner, this becomes Bezier corner, this becomes Bezier corner, this will become Bezier which is already there, this will become Bezier corner, this is Bezier, this is going to be a Bezier corner, this has to be Bezier corner and this has to be a Bezier corner. Okay. So now we have one handle here, one handle here. So we need to control. Now this handle will control this half. So it is here. And then this line is not adaptive. You can see those are edges. So I will go to interpolation, not rendering. And make it adaptive so it becomes smooth. Okay, close it. So now this curve can be moved inside. Okay, so that curve looks nice. Now this is here, so we need to okay, click here in the middle so it, the handles will move. These are too long. Okay, so you have the nice control over the curves. OK, 
So this can be in the center here. This is too long, so we can make it short. Move it around so it is in the center. This has a slight curve. This has a curve, so we'll move it out. And there is curve here also a little bit so this handle will bring that curve and then this will simply move up to get a straight line so you get that curve all right so we are done now we will select this line and then we will mirror it okay and then we want a copy and then mirror. Okay, so we got two lines. And once you are mirrored, select these two points and then we will weld them. Weld. Select these. Weld. Okay. So now we got that. Now again we'll select this and we'll use we're looking for attach. So we'll attach this line also. Okay. So I'll select this, shift move to copy it. So we can see what we got. I will shift copy this again one more time. Okay, in the perspective view. So this is the original one. This one I will assign extrude modifier. Okay, and then the extrude modifier has an amount of extrusion. So if I say 100 or 500, you get a thickness. All right. Here I'm going to use bevel. Okay. And bevel ha is like a advanced version of extrude, so that it has level one, level two. We will include start outline, but each of these, I will. The middle one is actually going to be the height. So this is 500. So I'll make this 500. And this I say we can make it. 100 and the last 100 okay so I'll move this out and then we will look at it here okay so you can see that we got 100 500 and 100 and then the outline I will make it 100 as well so you can see we got that line here and the last one will make it minus 100 so this got inside so we get a nice bevel there okay it may be too much i'll make it 50 50 50 is the height and negative 50 is the bevel okay so this one has a nice reflection on the edges and this is sharp so this gives a the bevel gives a much better look to the logo because of the shininess. Okay. In the next class, we will look at how to create the metal shader. Thank you.